Has anyone ever tried to convince you not to spend your time or your money on getting your guitar set up properly? If that's the case, you want to run, not walk away from that person because proper guitar setup is perhaps the most important thing you can do to your instrument to not only get it to play its best, but also sound its best. And today I'm going to show you how I go about doing it on this beautiful Telecaster build that I'm working on. Welcome back to the channel, folks. Most of the people that advertise guitar setups claim that you can do a 20 point or a 40 point guitar adjustment. And sometimes that can be the case if you go into a lot of detail, but typically a good guitar setup starts with about five main important points. And today I'm going to show you how I go about doing my guitar setups. I've been building this Telecaster and it's gotten to the point now where everything's put together. So the most important next step is getting the guitar set up. Now you don't want to skip this step and a lot of people feel that maybe it's not the most important thing, but I guarantee you that a proper setup uh, is perhaps the best thing you can do and the best money you can spend if you're not doing it yourself uh, to make your guitar play better and sound better. So today I'm going to show you the steps that I take and we're going to go through the five main points. I can go on and on. There could be a lot more involved than just these five steps, but these five steps that I'm going to show you today are the critical ones. All right. So you want to do them the way I show you, you want to do them in the same order that I show you. And uh, if you do that, you should be able to set up your guitar at least at the very least, if it's not, you know, if you're not practiced at doing this and you haven't done it before, you can at least get it in the ballpark. Now I want to share a disclaimer with you guys. Uh, if you're doing this for the first time and perhaps don't have the proper tools, don't feel confident, you're probably better off bringing it to a tech that knows what they're doing. Cause you know, it's not the most critical or it's not rocket science by any means, but things can go sideways pretty quickly. If there's some issues with your guitar that you're not aware of and don't really know how to handle. Okay. So that being said, if you do have the experience and you've done this before and perhaps just want a refresher or, you know, are a little bit confused about the order in which you should do this, then today is the video for you. So whether your guitar is just screaming out for help and needs new strings, or if it's a total overhaul, like we're doing on this current build, grab your notepad, grab your tools, and let's head off to the messy workbench so I can show you how I tackle this. The guitar came out really nicely and, um, I think so far it looks stunning. I can't wait to actually play the guitar, plug it in, try the beautiful pickups that are in this guitar from Mr. Glenn, Cruel Mistress set, and um, love the way the neck is looking, love the way the frets are nice and polished now, and the neck is nicely hydrated, everything looks really good. I'll give you a close-up view of the fretboard and also a view of the headstock with the new logo. I think everything looks pretty sharp. So today we're gonna to be looking at this guitar from another perspective, and that is going to be setting it up uh, because a guitar only plays as well as its setup. So we're gonna be doing a full setup on this guitar. I'm gonna be showing you everything from the intonation process, adjusting the pickups on the guitar, we already did a fret level, so I won't be showing you that, but we'll be doing a uh, string height adjustment, neck relief adjustment as well. And uh, we'll even be checking the nut just to make sure that it's all cut nicely and uh, we don't have excessive space between the nut, um, the first fret and the bottom of the strings there. So we're gonna take you along for the journey. I have a few things on my uh, bench here that I'm going to be using. So I have my feeler gauges, extremely important. I have my neck uh, capo. I have my string stretcher because we're going to want to stretch everything out and make sure everything is tuned up before we start. I did take a few measurements off of my favorite guitar. So I use this and this 
caliper and a ruler to be able to take all those measurements because the goal here today is to get this guitar set up the same way as my road worn telecaster which i feel is set up so nicely i love the feel of that guitar and the playability so my goal here today is to get everything in the same ballpark as that guitar so the steps involved with setting up a guitar are not that complicated still pretty basic stuff but you got to do them in the right order so the number one thing that i usually do when i install a new set of strings these are a new set of ernie ball uh, strings that I put on here these are nine gauge strings brand new set I usually like to stretch them out and I highly recommend using the uh, string stretcher if you want you could also do it with your hands but this saves a lot of wear and tear on your fingers stretch out all the strings make sure everything is tuned up properly because you do want to be able to make all of your adjustments and take all of your measurements when the guitar is actually tuned to pitch you want to make sure you're not dealing with uh, slacky strings so tune the guitar is number one next we're going to be doing a truss rod relief so i'm going to show you how to check your truss rod to make sure that it, it has the uh, right amount of relief in the neck uh, when you're setting up something that has a tremolo you would want to adjust the tremolo next in this case the telecaster doesn't have a tremolo so we're going to skip that step so step number two in this setup would be the bridge height. We want to adjust the bridge saddles to make sure that the strings are at the proper height, not getting any buzz. Next, we're going to check our nut slots and make sure that the spacing between the first fret and the bottom of the string is adequate and not too excessive. You don't want to have high strings at this point. I'll explain why in a second. Then we're going to adjust the pickup height. We want to make sure that we do have the proper spacing between the pickups. And then finally, we're going to do the intonation on the bridge and make sure everything is playing in tune. So let's get started. So to be able to check the relief on the guitar neck, you're going to need a few things. The first thing is you're going to need some sort of a capo so that you can block off the strings at the first fret so i like to put the capo on the first fret like so so that this all the strings are touching the first fret and then with my finger i usually like to hold down the strings at the last fret and we're going to take a measurement at about the seventh fret on the neck the reason why we do the seventh fret is because we want to uh, check where we have the most vibration in the string to make sure that things do clear. So I like to take a measurement at the seventh fret. Some people do it at the 12th. I think the seventh is a better location to be able to do that. And I'm going to want about a zero, uh, 0 0.012 space between the bottom of the string and the top of the fret um, or zero. 0.30 millimeters so that is this feeler gauge right here very very thin about i would say less than the thickness of a human hair so i will slip that underneath the string at the seventh fret and the string shouldn't lift up if the string lifts up it means we don't have enough clearance so I'll give you a close-up view of this so you can see just how little the string is actually moving. So I'm holding down the string at the last fret, I have the capo on, and we're just going to slide this underneath the fret here at the seventh fret. And actually, if I look very carefully, I think we're actually pretty good. I don't think we need to adjust it because it's not really moving. As you can see here, I'm sliding it on right under the the string without any anything touching. So I think we're technically good right there. In my case, uh, I actually got quite lucky because the spacing underneath the fret between the frets and the string 
was perfect. But if your guitar is not set appropriately, you can adjust things using the appropriate Allen key. The way to remember which direction to turn the Allen key is very straightforward. Once you're looking at your guitar and looking down the hole, if you turn your Allen key a quarter turn to the right, you're basically tightening things up. So righty tighty, you're tightening the truss rod, in which case you're actually going to be removing uh, the bow. You're actually gonna go from a back bow to a forward bow if you go far enough. And if you turn the truss rod the opposite direction, left, it would be loosening things up. So righty tighty, lefty loosey. So if you loosen up your, your truss rod, you will actually get more of a bow in the neck. So if you're lacking relief, you would loosen things up. If you need, need to reduce the space between your string and the fret, you'll be tightening things up. That's an easy way to remember which direction you need to go. In either case, a quarter turn at a time is more than sufficient. You should not need to turn the truss rod any more than that. If you find that you're turning the truss rod and it's just spinning loose, there could be a problem, at which case you would probably want to bring it to a professional. So a lot of people ask me how to get the right height on the saddles here. Um, and I like to mimic the setup on my other guitar. So to do that, what I did is I actually took a measurement over here at the 12th fret. I measured between the bottom of the string to the top of the fret at fret number 12, right over here, uh, on the low E string. And that space is about 1.5 millimeters, not very much. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and adjust the height of the bridge saddle here till I can get about 1.5 millimeter spacing at the 12th fret. Once I get that, I'll repeat that with all the other saddles on the guitar. Uh, at which point, if we take a straight edge here and put it down across the strings, the strings will actually be curved. It will follow the curvature of the neck, which is what you want. You don't want to have the strings laying straight across um, the saddles and not following the curvature of the neck because that won't make it very comfortable. So let's get started. I'll start lowering that until we get into the ballpark. And of course, you want to adjust uh, as far as you can go without getting any string buzz. Some guitars will allow you to go closer to the neck because the adjustment on the fretboard and the level is so good that you can go re really low without getting any buzz. Other guitars, not so much. So we'll see how far we can go on this one. So at this stage, we got to adjust and then measure, adjust and measure till we get everything into in the ballpark. Uh, I'm not too worried about uh, getting keeping the strings in tune for right now. I'll just do an initial uh, ballpark adjustment, then we'll retune everything and uh, see how close we are to the final mark. Now, to be able to do this uh, without getting my fingers in the way of the camera is going to be a challenge, but I'll try my best. Uh, I got the, the appropriate Allen key here, so I'm just going to lower that a couple of turns on each side till we feel we are in the ballpark and I'll go ahead and remeasure at the 12th fret. Still got a ways to go here. Very tricky to get the, uh, to get the measurements because the lighting is not that good here with my failing eyes that should be about right so the first string the e string should be about right i'm going to do the same to all the other strings then i'm going to retune the guitar and check for any buzzing so we've gone through the process now and adjusted the bridge so that we have about one 0.5 millimeter spacing between the bottom of the fret on the 12th uh, fret and the uh, low E string as well as all the other strings. Then I basically retuned the guitar, checked to see if there's any buzzing at this point and adjusted very very slightly up or down depending on whether or not there was any buzzing situation happening. Um, there wasn't that much of an adjustment to do 
really the um, the middle strings were pretty much bang on. I just had to adjust the last two strings and the low E and uh, the A string. So uh, we're in the ballpark now, which is great. So now that we have the relief set properly, we have the string height set properly. So the saddles have been adjusted in terms of height. The next thing I'm going to want to do in the process is to check the uh, nut and to make sure that we have enough of a clearance underneath the first fret. Adjusting the nut is quite critical at this point. We want to make sure that the slots on the nut are cut deep enough so that we have adequate clearance at the first fret. If they're cut too deep, you'll get buzzing when you're trying to strum the open string and you hear buzzing, that typically means that your nut slot is too low and your string is touching the first fret. How do we uh, check that and make sure that we have enough clearance? Well, typically what you wanna do is you wanna hold down the string at fret three. You wanna make sure that your, your string is touching the second fret. And then you wanna sight right underneath here and you wanna see how much play you have left underneath. So if I tap the string, I should hear a tap. So that's the sound test. If you wanna do the visual test, what I like to do is use my feeler gauges and I usually aim for about um, 0 0.20 millimeters or 0, uh, 0 0.008 and you wanna to try to slide that underneath, have clearance, right? But not necessarily lift the string. That is not a lot, folks. That is like less than a human hair, right? If I turn the gauge to its side, you can see just how thin that is. Not very much space there, guys. And that's basically all you need. You just need the strings to clear without touching the fret in any way so if i give you another angle here hopefully you can see that so you can see how little space you actually need some strings are even closer the lower strings are even closer but you can see they all have just slight clearance and that's all you need if you have any more than that you might want to take down the slots on your nut here Next in the process, we're going to be looking at the pickup height adjustment. Yes, the pickups need to be at the right height to sound their best. And I usually like to put it in the ballpark as well and then see um, how it sounds when it's plugged in to make the final adjustments. So here you can see just how high the uh, pickup is in the neck position. I have some measurements that I'm going to go by here just to make sure that everything is at the right height. And then we're going to do the same for the bridge position here. So let's get started. Okay, so when adjusting the pickups, I like to leave a gap of about two millimeters from the bottom of the string to the top of the pickup. So I usually press down the string like so and then take a measurement with your measuring tool and I like to leave about two millimeters so this pickup needs to be moved down just a smidge so make your adjustment then remeasure just a little lower should do it And you can see just how micro the adjustments are. That should be good. The pickup here is tilted slightly towards the neck, so I'm going to adjust that later um, once I have the heights adjusted properly here. All right, so the treble side needs to come up a little bit. Okay, that, that should be good. So we'll do the same thing with the bridge side and then we'll be in business. Just a slight 
adjustment lowered it just a little bit on that side. I have to flip the ruler to the other side here. To be able to see the measurement. And I think the treble side is good. I think we're pretty much in the proper ballpark for the pickups now. So the next thing we're gonna tackle is the intonation of the bridge. And we're almost done here, guys. So we're gonna start the intonation process on this guitar. Now, a couple of things you wanna keep in mind when doing intonation on any of your guitars. Number one, I tend to like to do the intonation process with the guitar not lying down uh, on a, a neck rest like this. The reason why, is because uh, putting pressure on the neck when you're doing the intonation can actually throw the intonation off. Uh, even if it's just very slightly, it's always better to do the intonation process holding the guitar on your lap, like you're playing the guitar. Now, for this video, it's gonna be extremely hard for me to show you that and give you a good view of the tuner pedal here at the same time. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to be doing it with the guitar laying down, but please try to do this with the guitar in your lap if you're doing it for yourself. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to need to have a good quality tuner. I usually use my strobe tuner. Uh, I have an app for that from Peterson. The only problem is it's on my phone and I'm actually using the phone right now to shoot the video, so I can't do both. So I'm going to be using my Polytune, but the Polytune works uh, equally well. It, you just have to maybe be a little bit more patient with it. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to just tune up the guitar and make sure that all the strings are in tune. So I'm going to do that really quick. When I do that, I'm going to try not to put any weight on the guitar, especially on the neck so that we get an accurate tuning here, as accurate as we can, with the guitar lying down. And once we have the guitar in tune, we can start testing. So to be able to test for intonation, what we want to do is we want to hit the string and then hit the octave at the 12th fret just by lightly touching the string and hitting the octave note. So as you can see here, this is slightly flat. So when the guitar string is flat, what we need to do is we need to actually bring it closer bring the bridge closer to the neck to make it sharp. So let's just put it in slightly, maybe a turn or so, and then retune the string. Every time you make an adjustment on the bridge, you have to retune your guitar. And then we're gonna hit the uh, harmonic, and we can see we have it right on now, beautiful. The, we're going to go to the next string. Since we moved the bridge, we're going to have to tune that up again. And we're going to hit the harmonic there. And that's good too. And then we're going to go to the next one. Make sure it's in tune. Hit the harmonic. That's good. Hit the next string. And that's good too. So far, we're getting lucky. We're getting lucky because most of the strings are in tune. Good. All right. So they seem to be uh, set at the right location, which is great. So one trick you could learn and remember is that if the note is sharp, you want to make the string longer. So you wanna push the bridge away from the neck. If the note is flat and you need to make it sharper, you wanna shorten the string. So you wanna bring the bridge closer to the neck. So if you remember 
those tips when you're doing the intonation process, you should be good to go. The other thing you want to remember is every time you make an adjustment at the bridge, anytime you move the saddle, whether it's front and back or up and down, you have to retune the string because it won't be in tune at that point anytime you make that adjustment so intonation is a lot of tuning and retuning when you're playing with the strings um, and normally when you look at a guitar bridge uh, when you look at the saddles they tend to all typically look very similar there is a certain stepped look to them and if your guitar bridge doesn't look like that, you can be pretty sure that your bridge is not intonated properly. Because when a guitar is intonated properly, it tends to, you tend to see a certain pattern. It goes up on the first three strings, then it goes slightly down and up again. So there's a little step look to the bridges when you look at them and they're set up properly. If your bridge is not doing something similar to that, then there's something wrong. Now, in this case, because I'm using compensated uh, saddles here, you can't really tell uh, without looking very carefully. But if you look at a Strat or a Telecaster that has individual saddles, you will see that stepped pattern. So keep that in mind. Uh, I'm going to do another intonation with the guitar on my lap just to make sure that it is set properly um, and if you have the ability to get yourself a strobe tuner this is not a strobe tuner but strobe tuners work even better because they're uh, even more accurate so you can really see the minute percentages that your strings might be off to get the intonation really, really close to what you need it to be. So if you have your bridge set up properly and you have your nut cut properly and the nut slots up here set the way they should be, there's no reason why your guitar should not play in tune properly and uh, sound really great. Now, when all of this is said and done, what I like to do is I like to give the guitar a chance to settle. So after I do all the setup, I like to play the guitar and do some more micro adjustments along the way. So if I feel, for example, that the volume on the bridge and the neck pickup are not balanced properly for this particular set, I might do some additional little tweaks to get it to sound good if it's required. I'll also work with the bridge saddles here to make sure I have all of the string heights the way I like them to be. Sometimes when you play the guitar and you actually play softly and you play more aggressively, you can see that perhaps some strings need to be slightly higher or some strings need to be slightly lower depending on your playing style. So I tend to continue the setup process a couple of days into uh, setting up the guitar just to get it to settle, get the neck relief to adjust or acclimatize, to acclimatize itself to the humidity or the dryness because the neck does have a tendency to continue to move. So if any kind of little tweaks are required, uh, I will do that with the truss rod. I'll, you know, check the relief from time to time on the guitar moving forward just to make sure I don't hear any buzzing and it plays the way I really want it to. If you take the time to set up your guitar properly, you will have a great sounding guitar. And more importantly, the guitar will feel really great under your fingers and you will enjoy playing the guitar every single day. Well guys, I'm really excited because another Telecaster build project under my belt and now that the guitar is put together and adjusted very finely, the only next thing that we have to do is to do a full review of the guitar so I can go through it with you guys and show you some playing samples so you can hear how good it sounds, not only after it's been adjusted, but also with the great pickups that we have installed in this guitar. I'm itching to get that 
uh, video uploaded for you guys so you can give me some feedback. Now, if you follow the steps that I've outlined here today in this setup series, you should be able to get the guitar that you have in the ballpark uh, without too many issues at all. It's not really difficult. The most important thing to remember, guys, is follow the steps in order. Don't skip any steps. That's critical. And of course, if there's anything that you're not comfortable with, you might want to consider taking it to somebody that has a little bit more experience than you do, just to make sure you don't cause more harm or more damage than good. But other than that, setups are very easy to do once you know the steps and you are comfortable with it you should be able to do it easy peasy whenever you feel your guitar needs it now some of you have asked me how often should you do a setup i usually do a, an inspection and at least a partial setup when required but i usually try and do it every time i change the strings on my guitar so if you change your strings often, you might not need to do a major adjustment. Minor tweaking should be enough. But if you don't change your strings very frequently, you might uh, want to take the time to do a full inspection and adjust anything that needs it. Uh, guitar setups are kind of like going to the dentist. The more often you go to the dentist, then the less there is to do usually. And uh, the longer you go without a checkup, then things get a little bit more involved for lack of a better word. So you wanna try and keep your eye on your guitar. If you make any adjustments, if you change the pickups or adjust anything in the bridge, change string gauge or whatnot, or if uh, temperatures change, humidity levels change throughout the year, you will probably need to do another adjustment. But adjusting your guitar is not very expensive if you do it yourself and you understand how it's done. It saves you money in the long term and gives you plenty more enjoyment out of your instrument. If you like the content we're producing here on Addicted to Gear, please consider subscribing. Do it right away before you forget. YouTube is making it a lot more difficult for this type of content to pop up in your feed, so you'll miss out if you don't do it. Uh, you also have the opportunity to ask any questions if you want on our live shows that go live every Sunday, either 10.30 a.m., or 10 o'clock p.m. depending on which weekend it falls on. So if you're interested in following along and asking questions, you can do that live. We appreciate all of the feedback, all of the comments, and you can get some additional useful information out of it. We normally post ahead of time to let you know which time slot we will be live. So take advantage of that and stay tuned to Addicted to Gear. There'll be more.